it's still not fair. I spent 48 hours in the hospital. It's not something you ask. Um, Sorry. The legacy of those decisions are confronting you in the face. Rugby saved me, and it saved loads of other people. Would I have changed the decision? My name's Hugo Monnier, and rugby is the sport that made me. But if we're being completely honest, the perception of rugby is that it's pretty exclusive. Rugby! And many communities in the UK still feel that the game is not a place for them. If we don't see people like ourselves in a space, we assume it's not for us. It's hard to be what you can't see. So I'm going to meet some incredible players who are bringing unity back to the game and changing the face and heart of rugby one tackle at a time. I'm Emmett, I'm a recent history graduate and I'm a rugby player. My job is using a line out to get the ball away from the other team. It suits my build and my abilities quite well. I'm not really fast, so I can't be a back, which is usually the position people my height are suited for. They call myself any quick pick ball. I'm really lucky to have a home team like Manchester Spartans. I know that I'm one of them. Everyone's welcome. It just makes me feel a part of the team, a part of the club. His journey itself and how rugby is perhaps a slight juxtaposition for him where it's been a safe place which has saved him but also a place where he's lost a bit of love and I'm not quite sure how those two things sit together and coexist but ultimately he's still connected to the game through the purity of the love and everything the game has done for him. <laughs> I just want to ask questions. He can be a real mouthpiece for a lot of people that I've misjudged. I'm ever so okay. sweet. <laughs> what role has rugby played in your life? Being able to join the rugby team at uni and then later on the Manchester Spartans and actually experience that LGBT culture like I'd never been to an LGBT club before, I'd never been on a night out before. So it has made me be able to be more myself. We're going to run through what's going to happen today. You've set up a rugby club yourself. Yeah, Transmanian Devils. Transmanian Devils, love it. <laughs> I actually voted for a different name. I voted on like Warlocks or something because I thought that was pretty wizardy. The Spartans are really, really proud to be hosting you today. Obviously, this is our home ground, so welcome. I've had such an amazing experience with the Spartans that I wanted to replicate that for other trans players. You know, rugby is supposed to be a sport for all. It's for all shapes and sizes and bodies. Ready? Up. I'm learning. I'm going to get loads of things wrong. So you were born a biological woman? Girl, yeah. I told you I'd get loads of things wrong. <laughs> so um, I grew up as a middle child. I never had like gender stereotypes or anything forced upon me, you know, because I was basically just one of the lads and I was allowed to be that and I loved it. I'm always a lad in my dreams. I'm never a girl in my dreams. Just things like that that didn't make sense. Starting PUB was really hard for me. It just always embarrassed me that, you know, that's what your body does, because it's not my body. Why is it doing that? So you were born a girl. What yeah. was the name of that person? Um, so <laughs> it's not something you ask, actually. Oh, really? Oh, um, sorry. No, no, it's fine. Because if I said that um, out loud, I'd then, you know, it'd give people the power to, like, dead name me. It'd give people power over me that I don't want them to have didn't realise how offensive it was and how people weaponise the name and the person they left behind against the person that they are today. Didn't have a clue. I was doing loads of research after Brianna Jai was murdered down the road from where we live. If that can happen in her community, who's saying it's not going to happen in mine? I scared myself straight, really. So you're going to uni, this is going to be you blossoming yeah. <laughs> it didn't, that didn't happen. Not straight away, no. I stopped eating for a period of time. I lost a load of weight. Um, I self-harmed quite a lot just before exam season started. I spent 48 hours in the hospital. You know, I thought I was protecting myself from the harsh reality of what being trans is, because nobody chooses to be trans. That's what a lot of people don't get with transgender people, is that the dysphoria is real and the mental health struggle is real. The idea of being trapped in the wrong body until I was 25, 26 was just not something I could mentally deal with. I had to do something for me. I think I'm okay. You know, I've got a lot of faith in this. Booking my top surgery and most of my problems went away. 
the idea of putting a sports bra on or risking having my shirt pulled over my head during the game. Like, I just couldn't cope with it. Emmett wanted the surgery, I mean he did, but he needed the surgery for his mental health and to be just authentically Emmett. Having this operation <laughs> has literally given me a future. It's given me a chance to actually do something with my life. You know, I want to be like my nan. She's this old lady that refuses to conform to stereotypes of her age. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. Life is too short and you have to go for your dream. Emmett's dream was this Emmett, my Emmett. So this is one of my chest binders. I've been stuck in one of these for like the last couple of years. It's, it's seen its battles, it's fallen to pieces. The rest of my binders have been donated or sold on. I'll be burning this to symbolise my next step. This is my freedom, because I no longer have to wear one. You know, people say, oh, he's chosen to have this. It's like, no, I didn't have a choice. It was get it done or potentially not be here in the next couple of years. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I feel so flat. Yeah. Like this shirt. My friends like to joke that I've got like Gucci nipples now. And I said, well, if I got Are you Gucci... happy with them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So where are we in Manchester? We're in Manchester's gay scene, so this okay. is Canal Street. It's full of LGBT venues, so bars, clubs, pubs. Would you also say it's a place which you would come to just because you just feel a bit safer there as well? Yeah. So rugby's been a massive safe space for you. Outside of that bubble is the other rugby world. How do you feel the relationship between everything you are and Stanford has been received and perhaps mirrored by that? I'd say it's not been great. The RFU Council will vote tomorrow on recommendations to ban transgender women from competing against other women in rugby. Back in July 2022, the RFU decided to ban trans women from all levels of rugby. They also decided to implement more restrictions on trans men. Why do I have to sign a risk assessment when there's cis men that are shorter than I am, older than I am, had more injuries like concussions and that. The RFU began a detailed review of its policy in autumn 2020. This included a game-wide survey receiving more than 11,000 responses, extensive consultation with and listening to a wide range of independent experts, as well as considering all available scientific evidence, along with liaising with other sporting bodies. So I sit on the diverse inclusion panel um, at England Rugby and this as a topic was the hardest one that we had to grapple. There were times where you no know, trans women and men need to be involved in it, that's what we're about. But the moment we got supplied with the evidence, we, we, we came to a conclusion that we understood objectively as to why they're making a decision. But the evidence that we had, a lot of it was unignorable. Would I have changed the decision? I don't know how you could be diverse and inclusive and ban trans people. It's harsh knowing that I love this sport so much, but the people in charge don't love me and don't love my community. Feel? Yeah. When you're sat in front of someone a person who is ultimately affected. The legacy of those decisions are, yeah, are now confronting you in the face. If you had your moment to sit in front of World Rugby, what would you say, what changes would you like to see? We want transparency on basically who, what research are they looking at, what research are they not and why being included in decision making, no, you know, publishing evidence with how transphobic the world seems at the minute. I'm not saying the decisions were made to be transphobic, but the whole world seems against us. Um, it does feed into that narrative, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, a lot of people say they're an ally and then just completely ignore us. We want the opposite. It's a good message, well put. Essentially, we want people to care for things that don't immediately affect them 
So what is it that he's asking for people that aren't transgender to help him and people like him? Education, I think, is the bedrock of, of everything. It gives you a greater understanding, which then builds empathy, which then allows you to not fully understand, because no one ever will unless you've been through it, but it allows you to build a, an emotional connection to how someone might feel. The Transmillion Devils has originated from the RFU's decision in part. It's just made me more determined. We're a ragtag group, different experiences, different backgrounds. <laughs> we want to get involved, we want to be heard. we just got to keep going. Today is all about celebrating the person that Emmett truly is. What he doesn't realise is that we've been able to gather all of his teammates to celebrate and enjoy this moment with him. Knowing what you know now about yourself and your journey and everything that you've been through, give that 11-year-old version of you a message. It is difficult, but just keep going. And there's always room for growth. So, you know, just pick yourself up, dust yourself down and keep going because eventually it, it does get better. But today has really been about you and a celebration of you and everything that you have become. So hey, hey, hey. It just gets so, so much better. You know, rugby saved me on a lot of occasions and it saved loads of other people as well. Exactly. You know, I didn't think I'd make it to 17. I didn't think I'd make it to 18. Here I am, feeling a hundred thousand times better within myself. I now have a future. We have a little present for you. This is a unity ball. There's four panels, four different stories, but this is your panel. And as you can see, the fangs, that's the Transmanian Devils, as well as a symbol here, which represents the transgender community, the flag, and all the organizations as well. Thank you. It's going on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> He was so patient and so gracious with me that day. Like everyone goes on a journey through life, but I doubt many have had as perhaps turbulent route to get into a point where they just feel comfortable with the person that they are today. I'm this for you. Hey! <laughs> Three years later, I'll be a six-part hunch rugby player. <laughs> Tiny hobbit sized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to picture it.